It is Monday, the Ides of July. I hope I'm still on here, because something funny just happened on my screen. So I hope I haven't had that problem where I stretch out, but we'll see. Anyway, it's been a very crazy, crazy... Uh, uh, zombie apocalypse kind of uh, weekend, hasn't it? Uh, anyway, here's a, I, I just sketched this out to show something. Catch your eye at the beginning of today's little talk. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I sort of titled my uh, talk today, Am I a Buddhist? Uh, now, last year, I think it was back in June, uh, I uh, shared uh, at least the bulk of uh, this morning's message. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, that's a, it's a difficult question uh, to ask. If I think if you would have asked Aleister Crowley if he was uh, uh, a Buddhist, uh, at different parts of his life or different phrases of his life, he'd say, yo, shit, yes. And, uh, but it's such a subtle thing that there's no way that you could say, no, I'm not a Buddhist or yes, I'm a, I'm a Buddhist. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm not a card carrying, uh, anything. I haven't, uh, uh, you know, studied formally anything. But it, it's one of those things. It's like, uh, are you a Thelemite? Well, you are if you are. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter what club you belong to or uh, even uh, even what you know. You either, uh, uh, you're, you're a Thelemite. Uh, Thelemites are something and not uh, just say they're something. Uh, but anyway, a very good friend of mine and a, and a fellow Freemason and a fellow uh, 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 magician, uh, John Boy, uh, uh, wrote several wonderful books. And uh, one of them was called um, uh, Why is God Upside Down? And I've posted a link to it. It's on Amazon and it's it's a wonderful book. And uh, John, in in his later years, uh, anyway, uh, had sort of settled into comfortably identifying as a as a Buddhist, and uh, I uh, totally uh, totally understand, uh, or at least as much as you can understand with your meat brain, uh, why he would. Uh, he would do that, and I was uh, honored to write a little introduction to his uh, book, Why Is God Upside Down? And I'm going to share it with you uh, in case you weren't looking over a year ago. And I, I believe the introduction is also in uh, my book, Allow Me to Introduce, from, from Wiser. So I, I'm not only plugging John's book, Why Is God Upside Down, I'm plugging my book. Allow me to introduce. I grew up in the white, middle-class, Protestant heartland of America, circa 1955 to 66. I was born in 48, but moved to Nebraska in 55, spent a little over 10 years there. My family attended the Methodist Church I sang in the choir and ceremonially lit and snuffed the candles at Sunday services. I was active in the Methodist Youth Fellowship and dutifully attended Sunday school, summer Bible camp, and volunteered to fold the weekly church bulletins and other duties around our century-old church. Actually, I didn't mind too much. It was pleasant enough. In fact, I felt perversely comfortable puttering around God's house. And a bit envious of our pastor and what I observed to be 
the respected and genteel lifestyle of small town of a small town Nebraska cleric. For several years, I even fantasized I, I might be a Methodist minister when I grew up. The complication was I didn't believe in God. <laughs> that, uh, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. Okay. Uh, I dreamed how nice it'd be to live in a rent-free in a Victorian parsonage and just walk a few steps next door to go to work in a cool, quiet pastor's study and have a beautiful wife and a handful of misbehaving kids. Have you ever known a preacher's kid? Where, where'd you meet them? In jail? <laughs> At detention? Now, I hope I didn't. I'm sure there's wonderful pastor's kids that, that uh, aren't juvenile delinquents or mass murderers. Okay. There was only one problem with this daydream. I didn't believe in God, and I didn't believe in the God-man Jesus, and I didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God, and I didn't believe that he rose from the dead. I didn't believe in heaven, and I didn't believe in hell, and I didn't believe in the devil. I didn't believe that I was sinful or had anything to apologize for or repent for. I didn't believe I needed to be forgiven or saved. I really couldn't believe that all these grown-ups actually believed themselves condemned to eternal flames and torment just for the crime of being born. I thought God and Jesus and hell were, were just like stories uh, for kids, like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. When it finally became clear to me that at least some of these grown-ups actually believed this stuff, I became instantly suspicious of all other adult beliefs, like patriotism and nationalism, and all the grown-up preoccupation with the dirtiness of sex, and their enthusiasm for war. In fact, I believed with all my heart that the grown-ups who tried to force me to believe this nonsense were complete idiots, or worse, hypocrites who didn't believe it either. Nobody had to teach me to disbelieve. It just simply didn't make any sense to me. I, I didn't know exactly what it was I did believe, but I knew enough even at that early age to conclude with absolute certainty that Christianity and the Bible and all the loudmouth bully religions that were based on that stupid book couldn't possibly be the only spiritual game plan in town. If there was anything I did believe, it was that anyone who tried to force me to believe this nonsense were complete idiots, had an angle, or worse. Naturally, I did feel a bit lonely in my heretical heart. A loneliness that eventually was assuaged by teenage hormonal distractions, rock music, and my involvement in the anti-war and civil rights movements. The moment I graduated from high school in 1966, I packed up my guitars and socialist songbooks and abandoned the prairie for the sunny beaches of Southern California. I arrived at college just in time to catch the crest of the psychedelic wave of cultural and spiritual awakening of, dare I say it, biblical proportions. I may have been adrift on a wild sea of religious and philosophical ideas, but I soon realized that I was anything but alone in rejecting the faith of my fathers. 
like Mr. Boy, this John Boy, the author of the book I'm commenting on, I initially sought out a ready-made ism. I might simply plug myself into to replace the stupidism of Christianity. There were plenty of isms to choose from. I think I'll be a Hindu. None of this is real. No, I don't eat that. Pardon me, I need a high colonic. Sorry, I'm celibate for health. Sorry, I tend to ejaculate more for health. <laughs> I'm fasting. I'm juice fasting. I'm water fasting. I'm air fasting. I was uncomfortable with the Hindu thing for, oh, I was comfortable with the Hindu thing for a while. At least it wasn't Christianity, and it offered many incarnations for me to work things out. But at the time, it felt a bit like I was trying to run Eastern software on my Western hardware. It took me several years before I started to realize that I didn't need to be rescued by an ism. Mr. Boy's story has many parallels to my own quest. Both of us were seeking something non-Christian, non-blind faith to attach to. John's way of going non-Christian was by going pre-Christian with the old gods and nature-affirming practices of neo-paganism. Mine, by going magical. Hermetic, and by Christian definition, heretical. Ironically, both these paths would find a common denominator in the rites and traditions of Freemasonry, a spiritual art form that to the sensitive initiate seems to exalt and synthesize the spiritual essences of both paganism and magic and does so under the seemingly innocuous umbrella of Bible stories. Now, it seems John and I have something else in common. That's the realization that our illumination, our enlightenment, our liberation will not, does not, cannot ever be ultimately found in organizations, clubs, orders, covens, societies, or religions. But it's simply a matter of waking up. A popular story, fable, tells that the uh, Buddha almost immediately after his enlightenment, walked around India preaching his doctrines. His holiness was apparent to all who encountered him. They saw in him a serene composure and countenance of a profound peace that they believed must only come from a god. Are you a god, they asked. No, he replied. Are you the incarnation of a god? No, he answered again. Are you a sorcerer? No. Are you a man? No. If you aren't a man or a sorcerer or a god, what are you? Buddha simply replied, I am awake. The word Buddhism ends with ism, but Buddhism isn't an ism. In essence, it is simply waking up. In Brother Boy's book, and the book again is uh, Why is God Upside Down? Available on Amazon. In his book, he recites a litany of many epiphanies and bitter disappointments that are the natural and inevitable rep recompense for all who would pin their aspirations on the process of working with other people and organizations. If you receive nothing else from your reading experience, I hope you will at least come away with a better understanding of your own journey. And when you close the book, 
you will be just a little more awake. Once again, the book is Why Is God Upside Down by John Boy. And that was my, uh, my introduction. Anyway, we've got a crazy stressful uh, day ahead of us. And uh, I hope to be with you uh, tomorrow about this same time. Oh, maybe from a parking lot a little later in the day. Anyway, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. Wake up.